Hi, welcome to part four of the Basic Lua tutorial series, where we're creating a single player collectathon game. Today we're going to be covering event broadcasting and tables. Uh, if you haven't already, check out part three. I'll drop a link in the description. Or if you haven't been following along at all, uh, check out part one. I'll put a card up here and also a link in the description for that. And you can also catch me streaming core development on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. I'll drop a link in the description for that also. And when you're ready, open up the Collectathon game project and we'll jump into it. Once the project is open, the first thing we want to do is open up the pickup item script and the score text script. So the score text script will be under client context, UI container, UI text box, score text. So double click that, just drag that to the bottom. And then we're going to do the same for pickup item. So it'll be under item pickup, trigger, scripts, item, pickup item. And the same thing, open that up. As always, I'm going to write the line of code first and then we'll explore what it's actually doing. So in this case, we want to go into our pickup item script. What we want to add is a new function. We're going to call this function update score. Update score. And, and we also want the trigger to reference that on connect. Let's double click update score, add score. And then we'll save that for now. Next, we want to add a line of code that's going to shout out into the world of the game, which is called event broadcasting. So we're going to go events dot broadcast. And then within this, we want to declare what are we yelling out into the world of the game? So in this case, we want to add score to player. And then we want to pass through a score. So in this case, we want to pass through score to add. We currently don't have a variable for score to add, so let's add that. You can either go ahead and add it in the custom property of the pickup item properties, or in this case, I'm just going to hard code it in. So score to add, I'm going to equal one. We'll just save that. If we scroll down to this function, let's explore what events.broadcast is actually doing. So what is this line of code saying? It's saying we're going to have an event that broadcasts the string add score to player and we're going to pass us through a variable called score to add. So in this case, we're going to yell out into the world of the game add score to player and then we're going to pass through a score. This will become relevant in the next section. So let's just save this script and we'll head over to score text. Now that in the pickup item script there is something yelling out into the abyss of the game world for other scripts to listen to, we now want to listen in to see if the broadcast has happened. So in this case, if it has happened, we need to listen it. So we go events dot connect. And then it's important that this string is the exact same as the broadcasted string. So we can just go to pick up item. Double click that, copy that, come back, just paste that in. And then instead of add score, uh, score to add, we actually want to reference a function, much like we would do for a trigger on connect. So let's add that function. So we know the function needs to update the score. So let's just go update score, close them and press end. So then copy update score, paste that here. The next thing we need to do is access the score to add. So if you go to the pickup item, we need to access this within this function. To do that, we can add the variable in here. Score to add. So that will pull it from the events connect. Well, in this case, it will pull it from this function in this script saying, okay, score to add. Score to add is one. So when it's broadcasted, it will broadcast the variable as well, which we can now access from up here. Now that the broadcasting is working, let's test that out by going print. We'll type test broadcasting. Save that. Go to the event log, press play. And if we walk into the trigger, it should say test broadcasting. Now that we know it's actually working, the next thing we want to do is go back to score text and actually run the code that we want to update 
the text to say the correct score. So in this case, we'll need another variable with the data type integer. So we'll call it current score and we'll equal it zero because on the side of the game, we don't want it to have any variable. So once we've done that, we want to add the score to the current score. So current score equals current score plus score to add. And then we want to print this score by going print, actually not print, sorry. We want the score text to update. So we go score text dot text equals. You may think we could just chuck in current score, but that won't work because it's not a string. So the way to work around that is we go two quotation marks, dot, dot, current score, dot, dot, two quotation marks. Let's save that, press play, and walk into the trigger. And the score has updated to one, two, three, four. So it doesn't look like the trigger is actually turning off anymore. Go back to pick up item. The reason for this is we're not actually calling trigger collision off and geometry visibility off. So what we can do here is copy that and paste that in the update score, save that, press play and just try it again. So now that we know the broadcasting event is functioning, what we can now do is duplicate the item pickup. So you can either select it, right click and duplicate. Or we can also go control C, control V and just move it along. Just make a few of those, save, and we'll press play. So it goes one, two, three, four. But what if we were to mistakenly, just say we delete the geometry of this one object. The rest haven't changed. So to make it consistent, let's delete these three. So click, shift, and click, delete. What we're gonna do is click on the item pickup, Right click, create new template from this. Let's keep it as item pickup and click new template. So that's gonna put it in our project content under item pickup. We can just click and drag from here. We can just copy and paste from here still. But if you make any changes to one of these, make sure you right click and update, update template from this. If there's any changes to the geometry. But there's actually one more thing we need to do and that is to declare that the player has won the game. So just like the pickup item, let's use our if statements to see if the player has won. So in this case, we go if current score is equal to say five, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, so six. Then we'll copy that, paste that, and we'll just say player one and save. So if we quickly run around and collect all those, Three, four, five, and six, player one. But what if you had, say, 40 different items to pick up? Like you have 40 copies of this item pickup, and the next day you want to change it down to 35. You're going to have to come into the code, hard code it, and like update the variable or the number here. Instead of doing that, let's, let's look at tables and what they can do for us to help us out. Arrays, tables, and lists vary differently depending on the programming language. But in Lua, we refer to them as arrays. In this case, we want the array to hold all the item pickups in our game. Now, the best way to do that is actually put them into a group folder that we can reference that will help us out first. So let's do that. Highlight those, right click, create new group, all underscore pickups. And then we need reference to this all pickups group. So go to score text. And I've already created one from before, but we drag, we want to create a core object reference and we want to drag the all pickups group into the missing object slot. From here, copy the line of code that was created for us into the score text and update the variable name. Next, we want to create a new variable that is going to hold the data type of an array. So local all pickups pickups 
array and it's going to equal everything within that all pickups folder. So all pickups, then colon, get children, close that, save that, and we're just going to go print all pickups array just to make sure it's actually creating a list for us. Save and press play. We're getting no errors, so that's good. Pent log, table, awesome. It is found the table. So if we go to the line of code, what this is saying is all pickups variable, which is now being created into an array data type, is referencing all the children within all pickups. So in this case, if we look at the hierarchy, this is the parent, and all these items are the children. And within those items, they have their own children. Now that we have our array, we now need to count how many game objects or children are within this reference. So we only have a list that's containing all of them. So we can just count that list to see how many's in there. So to do that, we're gonna use something called a for loop. So bear with me, I'll just write out the code first and then we'll discuss it. Let's look at what this for loop is actually doing. So what they're saying is every child within the list, we're going to create the list length and we're gonna plus one. So list length in this case is just going to be an in integer. Uh, so let's add also a variable for that. So local list length, and we're just gonna equal it zero. We save that. And then under this, this for loop, let's go print and we'll go list length. Save that, go to the event log, press play, six, which is correct, right? We have the parent and there is six objects containing this. Let's go back to the score text. So now that we know that it's functioning, what we can actually do is let's get rid of print. And within the update score, we're going to change if current score equals six, then print to list length. That way, Whenever we add another item and make sure it's placed in the all pickups, every time that item is picked up, it will count towards this and it will make sure that the current score can equal the list length. And when it does, the player wins. So let's just save that script if we haven't already. So if we go to the hierarchy, we'll copy and paste. Actually, instead, I'm gonna delete all those. Just go to this lonely one over here. Copy and paste that. Copy paste that, press play. And if we run over one, two and three, player has won. And that takes us to the end of part four of the basic law tutorial. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit that like button and also comment below with any questions or feedback that you have for me. Uh, in part five, the next video, we're going to look at animation, sound effects and VFX just to make our pickups more inviting to players to pick up.